Newton's universal law of gravitation, Newton is, which is something that we have talked about before uh, last year, but the format of the equation was just a hair different uh, this year than it was last year. Sarah Jane Jones, what is the equation for the universal law of gravitation Newton's big G equation? Uh, negative G mass 1 mass 2 over R squared times mass 2 is equal to? Uh, force of 1, 2. The force of 1, 2. So this is unit vector R, 1, 2. This is force of 1, 2. This is also a vector. So notice, the one from last year was just a scalar. This one is a vector. Uh, G is just a constant. M1 and M2 are just masses. R is the unit vector, the um, interaction between the two objects. Class R is not. It is. Distance between the center of mass of two objects. This is especially confusing, a, a confusing, because R sometimes is. Radius. Okay. So please be aware that sometimes it is the radius, but it is not always. By definition, it is simply the distance between the center of masses of the two objects. We had Kepler's three laws. I'm not going to talk about the first two. I talked about those enough in class. With Kepler's third law, class, did I tell you to memorize the equation for Kepler's third law? No, please do not memorize the equation. It is much more important that you are able to derive the information in, or in Kepler's third law, which is you have your object, you have your other object that's in orbit around it. Note, it could be like the nucleus of an atom and an electron. Just throwing it out there. Uh, we could have Kepler's third law here, where we have then we sum the forces in the in direction, which is just going to be force of gravity, which equals mass times centripetal acceleration, or big G, M1 m2 over r squared equals m times, we can do r omega squared, or we can do m times tangent velocity squared divided by the radius, depending on what we're trying to find. Generally, we use the equation that at the angular velocity, which is equal to what, Pajarella, by definition? Oh, so you're asking what angular velocity is equal to? By definition, yes, the equation. Uh, the derivative of uh, theta or uh, if we talk about the average angular velocity, it would just be the change of theta over change of time. If the time is the period, Loki, what is the change of theta? 2 pi. 2 pi radians. So please be aware that we basically use these things in combination to figure out exactly what just depends on the particular problem. Uh, we also had the universal um, gravitational potential energy. What is the equation for universal gravitational potential? Central energy here. Uh, negative integral of negative g m1 m2 over r2. Uh, that was actually part of the derivation. I would just get. Uh, I want to end with the. Oh, okay. F equals. Um, which one do you want to start with? I'm just trying to get to the end here. We're just ending with what is the equation for universal gravitational potential energy? Oh, negative g m1 m2. Negative big G M1 M2 over R. Notice that you always have to have two objects in order to have universal gravitational potential energy. Uh, in the past, we've talked about gravitational potential energy is equal to MGH. It seems like that only involves one mass. That is not true. What is the other mass always in this equation for gravitational potential energy MGH, Mr. Miller? It, it seems like that's just one mass, right? Because there's only one mass in the equation. But there is another mass in this. You can tell me what it is. Zach. <coughs> the Earth, okay? Because this is the gravitational potential energy relative to with the Earth. And it's always with a constant gravi uh, gravitation, uh, a constant acceleration due to gravi gravity. Whereas this equation right here is between any two masses and in a non constant gravitational field. Is that R in the parentheses? It is. This is a gravitational potential energy with respect to R, like oh, okay. a distance. Now, I just want to highlight some popular things to forget. The negative and the one. There's a one right there. Can you see it? Good. Uh, let's see. Oh, 
Uh, where is the zero line for universal gravitational potential energy? John? Um, at an infinite distance away. Notice that the zero line is at a distance of r is approximately equal to infinity. I'll be approximately equal there because it's hard to be at exactly infinity. Uh, when finding the concept of escape velocity, remember that we use the concept of conservation of mechanical energy to go through and find the escape velocity of something from a particular planet. Okay. Um, for the zero line, e being equal to infinity, yes. is that just assumed or do you want to... That is a predetermined zero line. You do not have to set the zero line. So unlike... The old equation, MGH, or I guess the one for a constant gravitational field where you do have to set the zero line, you do not have to talk about the zero line here because it's predetermined, it's a part of the equation. We used it to derive that equation. That ends chapter 13. Chapter 15 started with the equation for the force of a spring. What's the equation for the force of a spring, Mike? Negative kx. Mr. P, what are the, the dimensions for the spring constant? Newtons per meter. What does the negative mean in this equation? Uh, Catherine? Uh, well, the direction of the force is opposite the direction of the displacement. All it means is the direction of the force of the spring is opposite the direction of the displacement from equilibrium position. What is the equation that um, defines simple harmonic motion? If you can prove something follows this equation, it is in simple harmonic motion. The second derivative of x with respect to time equals negative of the angular frequency squared. This is the equation that governs simple harmonic motion. Class, is it on your equation sheet? No. Do you have to memorize it? <coughs> yes. Please make sure that you have this one memorized. Uh, let's see, there is, uh, what's an example of an equation for the position of an object that satisfies this simple harmonic motion definition? Travis. Um, the position of an object is a function of time that satisfies this simple harmonic motion. Is this like the A cosine? It is, it is okay. that thing. A cosine of omega with respect to time plus the base constant. So that is the position as a function of time. Uh, what is A? You check. Oh, these Which is? Oh. Is You're very close. Bailey, help them out. It's so the maximum distance from the equilibrium position. Omega is the angular frequency, and uh, phi is the phase constant or the phase shift. Um, so how would we figure out the velocity as a function of time class if we have the position as a function of time? The acceleration? Second derivative of the position or the derivative of the ones. Okay. So clearly if we have any one of those, we can figure out the other ones. Uh, just a moment to talk about the concept of angular frequency. Angular frequency, as we have already derived over here, actually I'll put it over here because it's already over here, uh, is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. Well, we know the frequency is equal to 1 over the period. So in other words, the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. So is the angular frequency equal to the frequency? Class. They are two different things. The angular frequency, bless you, is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. So they are clearly two different things. They are not the one and the same. The angular frequency ends up being equal to 2 pi times the frequency. Uh, we have two equations for the angular frequency. For example, we have one for a mass spring system. For a mass spring system, what is the angular frequency time? Wait, what? The angular frequency of a mass spring system. We derived it in class. I said this would be good to memorize. Uh, memorize. That's oh, hey, you know square what? root of 
k over m. Square root of k over m. So I pointed out that we should memorize this and you need to be able to derive. The other one was the angular frequency for a pendulum. The angular frequency for a pendulum is equal to what? Square root of g over l. Square root of g over l. One way to help you if you cannot remember whether it is k over m or m over k, for example, or g over l versus l over g is to use dimensions because dimensions are your Remember, the angular frequency is going to be in radians per second. So you can figure out which one it needs to be if, for some reason, you cannot remember whether it's g over l or l over g. It's in radians per second. Oh, uh, let's see. We also had the period of a mass spring system. We'll just put that one here. Period of a mass spring system is 2 pi square root of m over k and the period of a pendulum is 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Again, these are on the equation sheet, but you must be able to derive. Um, we also got that the acceleration maximum was equal to A times omega squared and that the velocity maximum was equal to A times omega. Please be aware that you must derive these. If you're going to use them, you must derive these two equations. For the acceleration maximum, you just sum the forces in the x direction. For the velocity maximum, you use conservation of energy to derive those two.